أعوذ بالله السلام العليم الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وإمامنا وقائدنا وحبتنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحلل عقدة من لسان يفقه قولي اللهم ربنا زدنا علما نافعا وعملا صالحا اللهم ربنا زدنا علما نافعا وعملا صالحا اللهم ربنا زدنا علما نافعا وعملا صالحا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا المتقين إماما ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا المتقين إماما ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا المتقين إماما ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا عذاب النار ربنا لا توافرنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرام كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقت لنا به وعفو عنا وقل لنا ورحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك موقف رحيم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Ustad. You okay? Alhamdulillah, yes. How are you? You okay? I'm Ustad, very well. Ustad, we'll be um, starting from Hadith 41 today, inshallah. Um, last, last, um, last class was very, very, very good. Inshallah, tabarakallah. Um, it was about Surah Al Fatiha, and there were so many gems that I personally learned from it. And all the participants, I do highly, highly advise. Go back to all of the last classes. Do take your own notes, inshallah. And if you do have any questions, that way you've taken your own notes down, you've got your own questions, and you can find time. Well, Ustad could, within this lesson, answer your uh, questions, inshallah. So, brothers and sisters, do, 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 please go back to all of the classes. Catch up on it all if need be. Take your notes and have your Q&As ready. Jazakumullah khair, Ustad. Thank you very much for your time again today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you so much. Allahumma ameen and accept all of your khair. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khair. Bismillah ar-Rahim. Hadith number 41. Title of the hadith is Repetition is a normal part of the treatment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyu aladhina amanu, idha laqeetu kiyatan, fathkutu wa thirullaha kathira la'allakum tuflihun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyu aladhina amanu, all those who have believed, believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believed in his final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, believed in everything that he Jalla has revealed within the Quran and within the revelation to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam generally and specifically. If you meet a group uh, be, be steadfast. So he is saying if you meet a group a group it doesn't say uh, what type of group but uh, understood from the context group which is your enemy group which is your enemy is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala next, next word of the commandment uh, instruction Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives makes you understand that it is your enemy it's a fast it's a fast be strong be firm and remember Allah when you're in that meeting with the, your enemy when you face to face with them, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. Now remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. Uh, obviously, to the of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart, to the of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the tongue, and then take the necessary legitimate appropriate means outwardly. 
all of this is part of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. So a lot here means what? A lot, a lot here means even if you have remembered him previously, you remember him now. Uh, and if you remembered him already, remember him again. So it includes repetition. Kathira, a lot includes the past, the present, and also repetition. So that you, you can become successful. So that you can become successful. I, whatever you're looking for against your enemy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill it and facilitate it for you and you will achieve it. As for the hadith, إِذَا رَأَى أَحَدُكْ مُؤْيَا يَكْرَاهُوَا فَلْيَبْسُقْ عَنْ يَسَارِهِ ثَلَاثًا وَلْيَسْتَعَلْ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْطَانِ ثَلَاثًا وَلْيَتَحَوَّلْ عَنْ جَنْبِهِ أَلَّذِي كَانَ عَلَيْهِ This hadith, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is saying, إِذَا رَأَى أَحَدُكْ مُؤْيَا يَكْرَاهُوَا If one of you sees a dream, that he, that may be slack. Then they should uh, sort of blow and spit a little bit with the blow on the left thrice, three times. And they should seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against the devil thrice. And they should turn to the other side, which they were sleeping. They should turn from that side to the other side. This hadith is in Sahih Muslim. Now, where's the repetition here? The repetition is in the word of three times. Yeah? Thrice. And you find this throughout the Ruqya, there's repetition. Throughout al and Dua, there's repetition. So the benefit of the repetition is that it emphasizes it makes you come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala internally. And it also makes you bond with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within a strong bond. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifests His will, His decree, uh, His uh, commandment upon yourself and upon your enemies. Points of benefit. The stream and prescribed by the Messenger of Allah so I'm saying to spittle to the left and take every three times can be filled during Ruqya, repeated with the intention of destroying and cleaning the shayateen. So, uh, blowing on the left three, three times, you can do this even when you're awake. When you see a bad dream, you can do this. Or when you dream Ruqya, during Ruqya, when you're going through those bad, bad dreams, uh, you can do this, or just general ruqya, the treating, treatment of your ayn, of your hasad, of your sihr. You can recite and then you can blow thrice, three times on the left. And you can recite any surah and then you blow it towards the left, or you can simply recite out of the as is in the hadith, and you can blow towards the left. Number two. If one sees nightmares or the same scary dream again and again, then when, when awake, he can follow the treatment of Khan in the hadith. Whilst imagining the dream in his mind with the intention of locating the source of those dreams or burning those dreams away. So when you're awake and you see these dreams often or repeated dreams, scary dreams, do this Rukia treatment, we saw some thought, which is you blow towards the left, Keep doing it, keep doing it with the intention of burning away the source of the sihr or the source of the ayn or the source of the hasad or the source of this bad dream that you're getting or this repeated scary dream that you're having. Number three, changing a room or a house is recommended when the sihr has become severe within the whole family. So here's how some what change the way you're sleeping. Yeah? Turn on, on to the other side. So changing the place uh, signifies that, that 
they cannot come with you so easily. So if you change change the position of your sleeping place, uh, the way you step to the right side or the left side, if, if you change, then it's not easy for them to what come come to you again and show you the nightmare. It's not easy. So what if you change the room? What if then if you change the house, it becomes more difficult for them to follow you. Next hadith. Hadith number 42. The saliva on some of, some of our upright raqa is a noble Muslim and the means of cure. The title of the hadith is The Slave of Some of Our Upright Raqis and Noble Muslims Can Be Means of Cure. And Aisha and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam can have the money, Bismillah, to Batu Ardina, Bidi Katiba Ardina, Yushfa Sakimina, Bidi Ibn Abina. The Prophet There should be a verse there. Uh, we are not that done. There should be a verse in that. Okay, I'll start off. Is that yeah. in, um, the, the first bit where it says the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Yeah, so that's that's the hadith that comes afterwards. Okay, heard it, Sean. But there should be a verse there. Oh, yeah. So, inshallah, there, there should be a verse there, firstly. So, inshallah, when, when, when is, when is the, once the booklet is out, the book is out, inshallah, all of these um, typos or copy and paste mistakes will be rectified, inshallah. Right, let's look at the hadith. Hadith, Prophet Sassam used to say to the patient, so Aisha reports this hadith. So she passed on some sentences to the patient, Bismillah, to the Batu Ardina, the earth of our land, or the soil of our land, and the saliva of some of us. Our ill people, or our people who are ill amongst us, are cured through these means with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Through what? Through soil and through saliva. Through soil and through saliva. So, subhanAllah, if you have pain, like for example, if you have a pain somewhere in your body and you take the soil of your land and you take your spit some saliva and place that soil with that saliva, mix it and place it on the part of your pain, subhanAllah, it, it, it works wonders. How does that happen? Allah, Allah knows best. Science has not reached that level yet to tell us exactly how that works. But Alhamdulillah, I have tried that on myself and other people, and it has worked. Now, can you decide uh, before you spit the saliva on the soil? Yes, you can. Um, now, can you do without the soil? Yes, you can. Uh, and again, it works amazingly. It works amazing. I'm sure you, most of you, or some of you maybe even were told, if you have spots on your body, take your slide and put it on the, on the spot, and that tiny spots, for example, and then uh, it doesn't leave a mark. And, and it, subhanAllah, that works as well. So saliva of oneself, there's a cure to it. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta obviously has placed that cure there. Imam Nawi said the Prophet would take his own saliva with his index, index finger, then insert into the earth, ensuring some of the soil remains on his finger, and then rub it against the painful area or wound, reciting the aforementioned words. So he would recite the affirmed words, and then he would place that soil and the saliva mixed in upon the place or area where there is pain or where there is wound. We say, Bismillah, Tulba to our dinner, Biri Katiba dinner, Ishfa Sakimuna, the evening of dinner. As you can see, it rhymes. Bismillah, 
تضبط أرضنا بذيحة بعضنا إشفى سقيمنا بإذن ربنا And for example, if you have a jinn, uh, jinn aashiq, or a jinn ifrit, or any jinn like that that's been very, very stubborn, is not coming out, just, do, just put your saliva, mix it with soil of your land, and place it on the areas that he or she resides, that jinn resides, that devil resides. So it could be your stomach, it could be on the back, it could be a lower area of your stomach. So wherever it resides, it could be on your head, middle of the head or back of your head. Wherever it resides, place it once in the day and once in the evening, place it with the intention of killing the shaitan. And we'll see what happens, inshallah. Points of benefit. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi used to do this often to his annual companions. This was often done by the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because Aisha says, we go back, Aisha says, we go up, yes. Aisha says, can I, so as I'm used to, yeah. He used to go up a bit more. I'm used to say this to the one who was ill. So that, that shows that Salah Islam is to recite this often to people who were ill. Number two. Point number two. Again, the mention of Allah's name is key to treatment and cure. So Bismillah is key. And any name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is key to the treatment and the manifestation of cure. Next point. The saliva of some of the upper Iraqis and past noble men and women can be a means of cure. Because he says, and the saliva of some, so it doesn't say all. So some here refers to the righteous, the pious, because this, this, their saliva is constantly moist. Why? Either, either due to the of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or either due to the session of the Quran, or either due to just simply refraining from backbiting and Islam and so on, and saying all those good words, positive words, uh, having Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and what he has legislated upon the tongue, expressing that in the tongue, and thereby. The tongue is pure, thereby the saliva embeds the purity that they have in their hearts, which is manifested upon the tongue. Next point. The names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned with pure soil mixed with upper Muslim saliva and placed on an injury or pain or on an ill person can be a means of cure for them whilst repeating this dua. Now one may ask, can they say this dua in Arabic only, or do they have to, can they say it in, in, in any other language? Obviously saying it in Arabic is, is uh, instructed, but one can say it, uh, the meaning of it, and that will also work. So one can say with the name of Allah, in the name of Allah, with our soil, with our saliva, uh, the cure takes place by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, so one can say them in their own language, inshallah, and the same manifestation will take place as a means of cure. Hadith 43, drinking beside the honey breaks eat and sad. As a title of Hadith number 43, the verse we took is, Thumma kuli min kuli tamarati pastiki subula rabbiki ghulula 
يخرج من بطون أشراب مختلف أمواله فيه شفاء للناس إن في ذلك الآية لقوم يتفكرون And eat from all the fruits and follow the ways of your Rabb laid down for you There are measures from the bellies a drink varying in colors in which there is a healing for people Did in that is a sign for people who feel Obviously, Allah SWT is talking about honey. Ibn Abbas said, and it is attributed to the Prophet healing is in three things. Healing is in three things. A drink of honey, the instrument of the copper, and the cauterizing with fire. But I forbid my nation to use cauterization. Points of benefit. Drinking without honey on an empty stomach breaks the consumed cell. And you can apply any other thing that it can be drinkable. We saw some said they are cured. So, for example, black seed, black seed oil, uh, also olive oil, this also zamzam, all of this can be drank to break the suhar which has been consumed. And they can be drank to burn away any hassle, any evil life within the past. Also, they can be drank to burn away any gene that's residing within them with the intention. Number two, it can also unite, it, 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 can, it can also untie the knots and take out the pins tied with the body by the cell. Because it's cure. What does that cure? What does that cure mean? Cure means that. It is cure to anything and everything that doctors or the artists cannot cure. That's why these are, these are cures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has left for people when ratis and when uh, doctors have failed. Number three, one ought to seek advice on how to consume inside the honey from the expert upper rati as each individual can be, case can be different, especially those that are diabetic. So obviously with the nuclear treatments, and with any treatment, you need to seek advice from uh, medical doctors and also nuclear writers, because they are experts uh, regarding your illness, and thereby you take the expert opinion before you consume or you take anything. And so when it comes to nuclear, for example, you'll find some giving advice and treating people differently. He did not treat one individual. Uh, he did not treat everyone uh, with the same treatment. That is because everyone's treatment is dependent on their particular illness, their particular ailment they are going through. Hadith number 44. Hijama and Siyakust cure many diseases, including Sahar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ وَرَسُولُمْ مِنْ أَنْفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٍ عَلَيْهِمْ عَلَيْكُمْ 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 There has suddenly come to you a messenger from among yourselves. Grievous to him is what you suffer. He is concerned over you and to the believers is kind and mercy. As for the hadith, Anas reported that he asked about the wages of the one who cups others. He said Allah's message of someone was cupped by Abu Taiba, to whom he gave two sour of food and interceded for him with his masters who consequently reduced his work. And the Prophet said, the best medicines you may treat yourself with are cupping and sea incense. He also said, you should not torture your children by treating tonsillitis, by pressuring the tonsils or the palate with the finger, but use incense. Okay. I'll read in Arabic, Anas and Nasu'ila and Ajil Hajjam, Fakala Ihtajam, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
حجمه أبو طيبة وأعطاه ساعين من طعام وكلم مواليه فخففوا عنه وقال إن إن أمثل ما تداويتم به الحجامة والقسط البحر إن أعلى نرشن والقسط الهندي إنديان قسط إنديان قسط والقسط البحر وقال لا تعذبوا سبيانكم من غمز من العذرة وعليكم بالقسط Answer benefit. Hijama has proven to cure the most severe cases of sihr. It is highly recommended for young adults to do once a month, especially if they are affected by sihr or ayn or hasan. Okay, hijama once a month was sunnah for us. Allah used to cup himself once a month. Hijama has proven to cure the most incredible disease of all time, cancer. This many have reported that they were cured. Of cancer through hijama and also through uh, black seeds. Number three, see a post or Indian post cure many diseases including sihr. However, expert advice should be sought about how best to treat with it. So, see the post, uh, if you Google it, you'll find how it looks like. And then, if you Google, uh, if you type it in YouTube, how to use it. The fine expert doctors and rappers explain how to use it. Okay, inshallah, we'll stop here and we'll take questions from you all. Inshallah, Allah will continue next week and hopefully by next week we will complete this book, inshallah. Barakallah for you, Ustad. Um, brothers and sisters, any uh, questions, please do put them forward. And then Ustad will get them answered, inshallah. And just so everyone's aware, we'll be uh, resuming from Hadith 45 from next week, Monday, inshallah. In the meantime, do catch up with all the um, previous classes, as mentioned on several occasions now. Also, do print out the 50 hadiths on Rukia from the actual website. The PDF is available just so you've got the actual booklet in front of yourself whilst you're going through the class. Also, if you want to print it out for your loved ones and so forth to help them out, to support them, do uh, print it out, inshallah. But yes, brothers and sisters, do put your questions forward, please. Jazakallah uh, khair. We'll give it um, about two minutes while the Q&As are being typed up and I'll put them forth to you with that, inshallah. Again, brothers and sisters, um, don't mind me saying this. Um, please don't take it to heart either. Uh, we've had we've had the same um, questions put forward this week as well in regards to treatment, what to do on treatments and so forth. Uh, I understand if you're new to the class, obviously you've not um, heard or start give the answers to these exact same questions throughout the other lessons. So maybe that will give you a chance to go back on the other classes, have a look at the Q and um, sorry, have a listen into the Q and A's, and take heed from it from there. But anything to do with treatment, um, I would advise today that I'm not going to put the questions forward, as on a weekly basis I am putting them forward. But just for those who have um, joined the class new, you can go to the Fitra Centre website which at the start of this video, I did explain um, what the Fitra Centre website offers and so forth. There is a treatment plan on there, which is done by Ustad Sheikh Abu Ubaid, and you can follow it for yourself or if you're supporting anyone who's afflicted. There's no harm in um, um, applying um, the Rukia treatment plan into your life. Although you don't have no afflictions, there's no harm in doing self Rukia on yourself on a daily basis. Um, even if you do not have any afflictions, sadly, in this day and age, um, you know, um, we wait. Um, it's not even about we wait. It happens, of course, Qadr Allah. Um, but 
Why, why should we get our act together when it happens to us? Why not be ahead of um, it? So, for example, if I'm consistent on doing rukia on myself, if I'm consistent on doing treatment of myself, then you know what? I'm untouchable with Allah's permission, inshallah. You know, so do take heed, do follow it for yourself, do um, teach your loved ones as well. And yeah, just uh, um, apply it in your daily life. Um, just the way people apply their odd cards in their daily life. So there's no harm in doing self rukya on yourself, even though you're not afflicted. And if you are afflicted, may, may, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure you. And may it be a means of bringing you closer to him, Allahumma ameen. And may it be a means of goodness for you, Allahumma ameen. So um, we'll start the first question I'm going to put forward to yourself today is, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Can I place my left hand on my um, private area during self rukya or can I, uh, am I allowed to place both hands? Or is that impermissible? Yes, you can. You can place your left hand when you when you apply black seed oil or olive oil or itar. You can use your left hand to apply it around your private areas, inshallah. And you can place your left hand uh, not directly on your private areas, but like uh, your boxes and so on, shorts. Just place it on top of your shorts, that will suffice uh, and while you're reciting. So do not put your left hand directly on the private area. Uh, put it, place your left hand on boxes, on your boxes, on your shorts. Uh, and that would be, uh, then you can recite what were Safadi articles and other other tools and so on, and other dua of Rupi, inshallah. Next question is Assalamu alaikum Sheikh Can we use our own saliva If we are too shy to ask a pious person Yes you can And that's the whole uh, Reason for this hadith This hadith came uh, uh, Even it, it suggests Weak of some Saliva of some Doesn't necessarily mean That not your saliva is weak not your saliva, so it, it embeds your saliva too. And obviously every patient, uh, every patient, they are, they are somewhat beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they're going through a severe trial. Anyone who has, who's got sihr or ayn or hasid, they are within, uh, within a jihad, they are within a jihad. Thereby, it is a severe trial and thereby it is, it is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is, is showing as a sign that he Jalla loves this approach. That's why he's trying them with the severe trial, which, which, which is the jihad uh, 24 hours a day that they're going through due to this uh, hasad of gene operation. Uh, that's why they are, they are, their slave, inshallah ta'ala, will be uh, within this hadith, inshallah. Next question is, um, I won't mention the partic uh, partic uh, participant's name. Um, I don't want to do that. It's just um, the individual, the brother is having breathing issues on a consistent level. And water retention, is this due to gin and sihar? Um, the best thing is to go and go to a raqi. Mm -hmm. And treat your, uh, get him, get yourself diagnosed. It could be hasad, it could be ayn, it could be sihar, it could be jinn position, it could be so many. So first, first the thing I'd advise you is go to a raqi and get yourself diagnosed. Inshallah, if the raqi is far or you don't know any raqis, then do to do self rukia treatment with the intention, with the specific intentions. So, for example, seven days you do rukia. Treatment with the intention if this if this illness you have is due to sihr. Next seven days you intend if if it's due to ayn. Next seven days you intend if it is due to hasad. Next seven days you intend if it is if it is due to mas ashatan position. Yeah, and then see which of these intentions out of these four intentions or five intentions, which one affected you the most. The one that affects you the most, go back to that intention and do the repair treatment for another seven days. And like that, keep going back to the intentions and whichever one uh, impacts you the most, go back to it, do the repair treatment for seven days until 
those intentions don't affect you anymore that, and you are cured. Yeah, so that's the way to find out. It's simply by you intending and doing the Rukia treatments for seven days and then intending again as a, another source, which is a different one than the previous one, and then going back like that to each one. And then when you intend it again after a month or so, nothing happens and you're much better. Then that means, alhamdulillah, you are either getting cured or you are fully cured. Ustad. Ustad, the next question is very, um, I'm going to say it's um, quite crucially important. The reason why I've listened to one of your lectures, and you did mention this in one of your lectures um, on the Fitra Law Centre YouTube channel, and it's to do with mental health. So the individual's question is to do with mental health. They, they, they're afflicted. Um, they still are afflicted, they believe, and... They're mentally disturbed due to the trauma they've had to witness. How do they get past this phase? Um, and should they seek um, mental health, um, professional help? We'll start. Bismillah. Yes, I've always advised anyone who's got a look at issue, they should seek uh, expert uh, counseling and therapy. Why? Because what you're going through is very, very lonely, lonely uh, sort of uh, lonely place you're in. You're in a lonely place, you're in a lonely, you're in a lonely space. It's a lonely journey as well. So I always advise brothers and sisters to go through therapy and counseling. And now, alhamdulillah, I mean, you can go through counseling and therapy through phones. You don't have to personally go and visit. Uh, a, a therapist or a counsellor, you can simply dial in and talk to someone and they can talk back to you and they can ex expert obviously and they can make you go through whatever trauma, difficulties you're going through or whatever you're going through spiritually, uh, the ailments you're going through. Um, you don't have to go in details, you can just give them the symptoms. You don't have to say, I've got sehar on me, I've got in position. You can simply say, uh, you know, uh, these are the thoughts I go through. What should I do with these thoughts? And obviously, if if they are non-Muslims, they don't have to go in the, in the thoughts of the dini issues. You can talk about thoughts of just the everyday for negative thoughts. For example, um, I get thoughts like uh, uh, I'm not attractive, or uh, or I look ugly, or uh, my my skin color is is not fit for my myself and so on. So you can go through these this thought processes that you have instead of talking about the dini issues which if it's a non-Muslim lady for example, you can talk about the other daily issues. For example, you have panic attacks to get on public transport, train, tube or, or, or bus. Uh, you, have, you have panic attacks just to go to shops and so on. So these things you can talk about and then if they can solve some of your problems, then at least they have solved some of the problems by which then you can focus on the Rukia treatments and the Rukia experts.